Hello and welcome to the capstone project of the discrete mathematics specialization. In this project, we are going to design and implement efficient programs for solving the so-called delivery problem. So we start by formally stating this problem. It is formally known as the traveling salesman problem. And the name comes from the following natural application. So imagine N cities and imagine a traveling sales person in one of these cities. And what he or she would like to do is to visit all the, uh, all the cities, all N cities, and to return back to the initial city. And of course, he or she would like to minimize the total traveling, uh, traveling lengths. Okay? So formally, the input to this problem consists of a complete weighted graph. By saying complete, I mean that there is a match between every pair of nodes. And by saying weighted, I mean that there is a number on, on every edge. And this number we call a weight or just the length of this edge. Okay? So a graph may be either directed or not. If it is undirected, then there is just one, one edge between every pair of nodes. If it is directed, then there is an edge from A to B and an edge from B to A for every pair of nodes A and B. And in general, the weights of these two edges should not be equal. Okay? So what we're looking for is just a cycle that visits every node exactly once and has the minimum total weight or the minimum total length, which is exactly the same. So sometimes in some applications we are interested in finding a cycle, in some applications we are interested in finding a path. So the difference between a cycle and a path is that a cycle starts and ends in exactly the same, in exactly the same node, while when we are talking about a path, we mean a path that starts in some node and ends in some different node. So in a cycle, there are exactly n nodes and exactly n edges, while in a path, there are n, minus, n nodes, I'm sorry, and n minus one edges. Okay? Okay, now let's focus on this small example. So in this case, we have a non-directed weighted graph, complete undirected weighted graph on five nodes. Okay, and we are looking for, for a cycle that visits every node exactly once. So if you try to find a cycle in this, uh, such a cycle in this graph manually, you will notice quickly that even for this small example, it is not so easy. Okay, so let's, let's consider a few such cycles. For example, if we just go around this graph, we, we get the total length 15. However, if we visit all the nodes this in, star, in this star shape, then the total length is equal to 11. And it turns out that even 11 is not the, the best possible in this case. So the best cycle in this case has length 9. Okay, and it is shown now on this slide. So in this case, the total length is computed as follows. It is 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 and finally plus 2. So it is not difficult to see that indeed in this case we visit all the nodes, uh, we visit every node exactly once and there are exactly five edges in this cycle. Okay? So there are just a countless number of, uh, of applications of the traveling salesman problem in practice. And already in this video we will see several of them. Okay? Then, the state of the art is that for this problem we still do not know an efficient, a provably efficient algorithm. Namely, we do not have any algorithm which is guaranteed to find an optimal cycle in time polynomial in n, for example. So if uh, this is just because we, we still do not know whether, whether the classes P and then P are equal. So this is a classical NP hard problem. So we, do, we actually do not expect such algorithm to exist. Okay? Uh, so in the call of this project, as I mentioned already, is to implement efficient programs that can solve instances consisting of, say, like 20 or 30 nodes in, in practice quickly and uh, that can solve such instances exactly or such graphs exactly and that can solve uh, much larger instances approximately. And by saying approximately, I mean that we are going to output not probably an optimal cycle, but a cycle that is guaranteed to be not much worse than an optimal one. Okay? So, as for applications, of course, the most obvious application comes from, from delivery problem. 
when we need to visit several locations uh, to deliver some goods. So this is a problem that is solved probably millions of times per day by delivery companies. Okay, so in this case again we have several points and we have we know all the distances between them and we would like to visit all of them. So we are interested in it and probably we were interested in returning back. Right? So we are, we are looking for a cycle, uh, for a travel and salesman person cycle of minimum total length. Okay? Uh, so another, another natural application is the case when we are minimizing not the traveling time or not the tra traveling distance, but, but the, the traveling price. Okay? So imagine that you are going to visit some five cities in the US, namely uh, namely New York City, Miami, Chicago, Seattle and, and San Francisco. So what you can, after deciding that you are interested just in these five cities, what you may want to do is, is the following. You first forget about the map completely. So you now have just these five cities and then you figure out what are the prices for flight tickets between every pair of these uh, of these uh, of these cities, and in particular, what is shown here is that sometimes the price of traveling from one city to the other one is not equal to the price as as it usually happens to the price of, of flying back. Right, so we have 17 here and 15 here. Of of course, these are just random numbers that do not reflect the current prices. Okay, so what this example shows is that sometimes we minimize not just the traveling distance or the traveling time, but but some some different parameter. And in this case, we are actually interested in a in a directed graph, in a complete directed graph. Okay. So the next application is drilling a circuit board. So imagine a factory that produces uh, that produces circuit boards. A circuit board is something that looks like like shown on the slide. So to produce it to produce it in an automatic way, uh, they have a machine that drills circuit uh, that drills holes in in a circuit board. I'm sorry. And of course, the, the locations of the holes are, are predefined. So they, for example, look like this. So we would like the machine, for example, a laser, to visit all these places and to drill holes in all of them. And of course, again, we would like the, the ordering of, of this, uh, of this uh, of these locations, of visiting these locations, I'm sorry, to be so that the, the, total, uh, the total travel in time between them is as small as possible, right? So, for example, here on the right, we see a potential solution to this problem. So, this is probably the shortest such route. Okay, and as you see, in real life applications of the travel and salesman problem, there may be like hundreds of, of nodes to be visited. Okay? Uh, let me also make a remark that the, uh, an example that we've such seen is, uh, is an instance uh, of the so-called special, of the special case called the Euclidean travel and salesman person problem. In this case, we are not given a graph uh, explicitly, we are given just, instead, we are given just endpoints, endpoints on the plane specifying just by their coordinates. Okay, and the weights on edges between the corresponding points are given to us implicitly by the well-known formula. So if we have two points PI and PJ, these are recall these are just points on the plane, so I assume that this is PI, this is PJ. So the coordinates of PI is IXI YY, the coordinates of PJ are YY YJ. Okay? Then the distance between PI or PJ, so the distance in this case is the same as weight or length. So we know how to compute it. This is just square root of the square of, uh, of it should be xj, I'm sorry, uh, the distance, uh, the square of xi minus xj uh, and the square of yy minus or yj. So we, we compute the sum of the squares and we compute the square root. So this gives us the distance between the corresponding two points implicitly. So it is not part of the input, we just can, we can always compute it, right? So and this is an important special case. So in many applications what we're given is essentially endpoints on, on a plane. Right? And then let me also state some properties. So when we're given such an instance, we were essentially given a non-directed graph because 
the uh, like the distance from pi to pj is exactly the same as the distance between pj and pi. So put it otherwise, the graph in this case is undirected or symmetric. Okay, and what is also important about this special case is that the weights in this case satisfy the triangle inequality. Namely, for every three points pi, pj, and pk, we know that the weight of uh, the, the edge from pi to pj is at most the weight of uh, the edge from pi to pk uh, plus the, the weight of the edge from pk to pj. Namely, put it otherwise once again, the, the shortest path from pi to pj is to go directly from pi to pj. Each time when we, when we go through some other vertex pk, we get, uh, uh, we get uh, probably a longer path, so probably there is a path of the same length, but not, not shorter. Okay? Uh, finally, let me mention the following also application. Uh, which is also quite natural. So again, imagine some complex, uh, some complex machine, and imagine that there are n mechanical components that needs to be somehow processed or handled by this machine, and all these components are of different types. And we know so if machine processes some component i and then is going to process some component j, then we need to somehow reconfigure this machine. It should be reconfigured somehow automatically, but in any case, it takes some amount of time to reconfigure a machine uh, before, proce uh, before processing the component j after processing component i. So in this case, again, we are given some graph. So we know the time needed to reconfigure a machine uh, after processing the component i and before processing the component j. So what we would like to do is the order of processing all our, all our components, which minimizes the total uh, uh, reconfiguration time. Okay? So in the next video we will see one more application and then we will proceed to, to designing algorithms and programs for this important combinatorial problem.